Welcome back friends, Anthony Turnham, professional photographer here. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about a very real problem that us photographers face, and that is the organization of our photos. If you follow my channel, my tutorials, you'll be familiar with just how good Luminar Neo can be as a photo editor. But in terms of photo management, it's not the best. And that's where this good news comes in. I've been contacted by Skylum, who make Luminar, and they've let me know that they're actually doing a collaboration with Xire Photo, which is an AI-based photo management tool tool. So they've asked me, can I take a look at it, check it out, see what I think and share my findings with you guys. So that is exactly what we're going to do in this video. The first thing we notice when we load up Xire Photo is that we have a welcome screen that gives us some tips and tricks so we can literally go through these and actually learn how to use the software. However, you're watching this video so I might as well just close that down and tell you what's what. I've already loaded in a folder of photos from when I was away traveling back in 2019 and until now they've just sat on my hard drive unedited because that thought of actually going through and organizing these photos, sorting out the folders, it's just in the too hard basket. So that is where software like this can really be an absolute game changer for you and there's a brilliant feature in here that actually allows you to quickly search through all your photos using the AI of the software so if there's a photo that you actually want to look for you don't have to spend that time flicking through all the photos you can use the AI to actually guide your search and find something really quickly so I'm really looking forward to showing you that but for now let me show you the basics of just introducing a folder into the catalog and we're going to let Xire photo go through that folder and quickly analyze all those photos and it's going to assign keywords to our photos. We don't have to go through and do that, it's gonna do it for us. So this is our main working screen here, nice and simple. If we want to have more screen real estate, we can press F11 on the keyboard, that's gonna get rid of that, and just give us a really nice clean working space. Currently, I've just imported all the photographs from May that I took, but if I want to add some more, I just click this plus icon here, come over, and I can actually browse to find the right folder, and this time I just want to add the 06 June. So normally the way I organize my photos is just in a date order, but this is an absolute mess at the moment. We've got photos from my phone, my wife's phone, photos for my friend, some that I want to delete, even a Nelson football tournament in there for some reason. It's a real mess. So this is where this kind of tool comes in, just to help you organize your photographic life. So I'm just going to click select folder, and now we need to come down and just make sure that we're happy with the options that we have here. So we can include subfolders. So for example, if I wanted to, I could actually just introduce this whole world travel folder that contains all of the subfolders, all of the dates from while we we're away traveling for four months. And then with this include subfolders option selected, it would actually introduce all of the folders and any subfolders within that. So that's a really good thing to turn on, but I'm just gonna introduce that single folder for June at the moment. What we also need to do is analyze the photos if we want to put keywords on the photos, which absolutely we do because that is one of the big benefits of this software is that it's gonna automatically assign those keywords and save us having to do it ourselves. And then we can use those keywords to search for specific photos that we wanna look for. And the final option is just to always create the previews. And so once we've got those selected, we just click this play button to start. And you can see in the top left-hand corner here, it's now finding the photos. And look how quickly it's plowing through those. It's found all of those photos, and now it's gonna register them. And now in step five, it's gonna go through and analyze those photos. And it's doing it relatively quickly, considering it's actually looking at all of those photos and looking for specific objects, items, people, and assigning those keywords. And it's doing it all with artificial intelligence so it shares that in common with Luminar Neo that it is an AI based piece of software and unlike some other AI software this is all being done locally on your machine so your photos aren't going off into the cloud to be processed and that information then coming back into the software everything stays on your machine so although this is a big batch of my family photos believe it or not I value my privacy and so having this all local on my machine rather than going to the cloud again another big benefit so now my computer's hard at work analyzing these photos. We're currently at 1,113 of 2,915. This is just one month from while I was away, so I underestimated just how many photos I actually took. So if I can have a piece of software that is actually gonna help me organize all of these images, that is just so valuable to me. And it's really nice as you click through these photos, you get just a little animation here, but much more importantly than that, if you look on the right hand side here, XR has already gone through this photo and decided that it should apply the keywords adult, bright, child, eyes open, face, female, frontal face, group, male person. 
restaurant, which is actually quite funny because it's just my mum and dad's breakfast table. But you can see that it's having a good educated guess at what this should be like. It could be a restaurant, right? So we're relying on the AI to get this right. And of course, it's not always going to do that, but it's going to get us a lot closer and save us a lot of time manually going through and keywording this ourselves. So, so far, I'm really impressed with this. Okay, and there we go, it's done. We've got a status report saying that the time taken was seven minutes, 45 seconds. And I know for a fact, if I was to keyword this myself for one, I'd be, I'd be boring as anything, but it would take me so long to do that. So seven minutes, 45 seconds for it to keyword nearly 3000 photos. I think we're winning. One of the things I'm guilty of when I'm taking photos is that I will often take various shots in the same place. They look very similar and really I only need one of those photos. I'm just searching for that best shot. However, sometimes it's hard to actually go through, look for the duplicates, look for the similar images. However, with a tool like this, it's really, really easy to do. If we come over to the top right hand corner here, these are our search tools. And so what I can actually do is click on this very first icon here, find duplicates and then we can specify where XIR is actually gonna be searching. In this case, I'll just leave it on whole database and we can specify as well how tightly, how strict we want those duplicates to be. So are they almost identical or do we wanna just let it be a little more loose with its comparison? So for now, I'm just gonna leave that at medium and we're gonna click start search and see what it can bring up for us. And just like that, with that setting criteria, here we go. We can see that we already have a set of duplicates showing up. So I can go through and I can actually just choose which one I want to keep. In this case, I actually think that these are exact. Oh no, this one is different. If you look, my son's looking straight at the camera here and here he's got his face turned to the left. So I really only need to keep one of those. So when I've decided which one I want to keep, I can either come in and right click and we can either remove the photo and just remove it from this catalog or or I can delete it from the device, i.e. remove it from my computer. So just be careful doing that. Make sure that you're sure that you wanna get rid of it. But yes, you can absolutely do that. So that's actually gonna be a really good tool for me to go through and actually cull this catalog down. Let's do another search, but this time let's make the similarity threshold just very loose and just see what it comes up with. I expect it's gonna yeah, send back more photos now. So let's just go to show duplicates and you can see. Now we've loosened that search. We've gone from 18 duplicates in the last search results to 82. And you can see straight away, we've got some different photos. My wife and I on the beach here. Oh, take me back there right now. My daughter's skipping along this little reflected area here. Super easy to use, but super useful. Let's jump back into our folders section here and we'll just go into the June section that we had before. If we select this photo here, for instance, we can see that the keywords update to reflect what's in this photo. You can also see that we have all of the metadata here as well. Above our thumbnail view along the top here, we have this really useful search bar and this is fantastic. So we can search via our star ratings of our photos. So for example, if we particularly like this photo, what we can do is come down here and we can actually say, hey, you know what? I wanna assign this four stars. And we can also assign a color label or pick or reject a photo. And then we're able to use this search tool to say, you know what? I just wanna see photos that are greater than or equal to four stars. And there you go, there's that one. And how about we just see the photos that we've given three stars and above. And there you go. It's just sorted all of those out for us as well. Now you may be wondering, where's it actually getting that information from? How have they all got star ratings already when I've only just brought that folder in? And this is a really cool thing. I actually originally had these photos set up in a catalog in Lightroom. I've gone through in Lightroom and I've given them star ratings in Lightroom. That information has been brought over without me having to do anything into Xire Photo. So my existing hard work of Lightroom, I haven't lost it. So I'm able to capitalize on what this is able to do in terms of adding the keywords, the search functionality, all of that stuff. And I'm able just to leave Lightroom behind without losing all of my hard work that I've already done. So again, another cool feature. Okay, so how does this actually tie in with Luminar Neo? How do we get Xire Photo and Luminar Neo working seamlessly together so we can leverage from the best of both programs and get our editing done as well as organizing our photos? Well, let me show you. If you watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I like architectural photography. So let's say that I actually want to edit a bit of architecture. I don't know, this one here, for example, but I don't want to go through and actually just look for my architecture one photo after the other. I'm going to use Xire Photo to actually search for it. 
So I can click that button there, which allows me to find by keyword. And we can either do that via content, and we have predefined categories here, such as animal and lo and behold architecture, or we can actually search by photographic specifications, such as bouquet, colorfulness, things like that. But in this case, we're gonna go into architecture and start specifying exactly which type of architecture we want to search for. So we could add bridge, for example, we could add building, or we could just click the overarching subject, architecture, just there. And just based on that search alone, apparently it's found 1,317 photos. So let's see what it's finding for us. And there you go, we've got some amazing work by Gaudi there. We can see what those amazing engineers in Greece were up to. I've got all sorts of stuff that's been found just by using that one search. So that is a really powerful tool. Currently our search results are sorted by relevance, but we could change that to be reflective of the star rating, the capture date, file name, anything we choose. And then just for simplicity's sake, let's say we wanted to edit this photo and we're working on a project where we're turning things black and white. We just need to right click on it or option click on a Mac and then we're gonna open with and we can select one of our preferred photo editors. Obviously we're gonna go with Luminar Neo, that's what I like to use. The photo loads in for editing and then for the sake of speed let's just come in here i'm going to jump into my monochrome we could choose elegant matte or let's say we wanted something more low key so we just click on the low key preset luminar's made those changes for us and then we just need to follow our usual process where we right click and we come to export and it's up to us where we export that. We could send it to the same folder that the original came from. You could have a whole new structure where you have all of your edits saved, entirely up to you. But again, we could use Xire Photo to actually manage those photos, those edits as well. So the two things start to kind of work together in a kind of nice little harmony. Actually, before we leave Xire Photo, I want to set it a practical task because I know that there's a photo that was taken of me with some of my childhood friends. And I need to, I really want to see that photo. I want to be able to send it to my friends the problem is I don't actually know where it is I'm not sure when I took it um, what date it was or anything so let's see if we can leverage the AI in our favor using that face finding technology to actually see if we can locate that photo let's give it a go okay we currently have all the photos selected I'm gonna come over to the find faces option here in the top right when we click that we have the option to find just a single face, single portrait, couple of faces, several faces, which is what I want to actually go for, because as I say, it was me and my friends. I would love to be selecting the teenager, young adult box, but I think we're just gonna play it safe and go for adult, maybe even elderly these days. Anyway, we're just gonna go with adult and see how it does. If my friends were female, we could push that slider over there. However, they are all guys, so we're gonna leave it over towards this. And in fact, we could push it all the way over there and we can choose whether we want to have them smiling, not smiling, that's gonna be the search. But I think we've already been pretty specific, actually. Um, I think we were smiling, I hope we were. Anyway, let's click the search button and there you go. There are me and my buddies. Currently you can see that these photos aren't the highest quality and I'm absolutely fine with that. These are just previews and if it allows this software to move quicker, then game on, I'm all for that. And let's suppose I wanna find more photos of my son. It's really easy to do with this tool. We can come over in the top right hand corner again, come to find people and look at that. It's already identified all of the faces and it's already applied the keywords face, frontal face, child, eyes closed, potentially, I don't think they are, male and smile. But what's more, we can actually click on my son's face here and say, we wanna find more photos of Finn. So we're gonna click start search. And look at that, in a blink of an eye, it's found all of these photos with Finn in them. So for example, if I wanted to print out this shot here for him, let's say for his bedroom wall with all the Barcelona players behind him, without this tool, it might have taken me quite a while to find this photo. So I'm really pleased about that. When I take on a promotional video for any company, part of the criteria for me actually saying yes and agreeing to it is to make sure that it's actually adding value to you guys as the audience. And part of my test criteria for that is, would I use it myself? And having come from using Lightroom as my main cataloging tool and then trying Xire Photo, I'm actually blown away by just how easy it is to use and just how much the AI is actually able to do for us in terms of keywording. In the past, I've actually set aside a whole week for me going back through all my old photos 
adding keywords individually so I could then go through and search my hard drives looking for specific photos because it was just becoming unmanageable and at the end of the day I'm pretty sure this tool is going to add manageability to your photo workflow. If you want to take advantage of what Skylum and Exire Photo have put together which is a combined bundle that I believe is 119 US dollars for the whole thing both applications at the moment I'll put a link to that in the description below you can go and check that out um, thoroughly recommend it um, thank you so much for watching guys if you want me to create a full tutorial on this because I honestly feel like I've only just scratched the surface I'm more than happy to do that but you will have seen it is very intuitive very simple to use so well worth checking out as always thank you so much for watching you're still with me and I really appreciate that I will see you in the next video bye for now